Amen, amen. For all those who are on with us, uh, my name is Reverend Mark Reed here on our uh, Sunday fellowship, Sunday afternoon fellowship. And it is an honor to uh, have those who are or will be a part of this fellowship on Sunday afternoons to uh, partake in the word partake in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. To hear the word, to share the word, to preach the word. And if any of you have any questions or concern, you can always get in contact with me. Uh, my email is uh, markreed67 at gmail.com or you can pointly, you can text me or call me at my cell phone at 650-787-7865. It is truly a blessing to be here this another Sunday, another Lord's Day that we may fellowship with one another and partake in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, trying to give a few people time to come in uh, to be a part of this. I know some are busy on Sunday, some uh, have a lot going on, uh, but hey, there's only a few of us, the word will still go out. And the word still will be preached. Amen. Amen. Just giving people a few minutes. To come on in and be a part. We'll go ahead and get started, and as we go, I'm sure there'll be more that will come in and be a part of this. Amen, amen. We're going to open with a scripture out of the book of Psalms. Make it Psalms 37, 1 through 5. Very familiar passages of scripture. And after that, we'll do a prayer. And then after that, we'll go ahead and get into the word of God. Amen. Amen. Psalms 37, beginning at the first verse, reads, Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall... Thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine, of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. I've read for your hearing again Psalms 37, 1 through 5. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. And if you are here, let's bow our heads and, uh, and go into prayer. Our Father and our God, Lord, we come to you right now. Thank you, Lord God, for this afternoon fellowship. We thank you, Lord God, for us being able to see another Sunday, another Lord's Day. Realizing, Lord God, there were many who started out last Sunday, Lord God, but did not make it to this Sunday. And for this, we want to say thank you. Now, Lord God, as we go into your word and the study of your word and the preaching of your word, we ask you, Lord God, to use me as your instrument, that your word may go out, that someone may hear, that someone's heart may be pricked, Lord God, that someone may be helped by your word today. Realizing, Lord God, it's not about us, but it's about your word, it's about the gospel, and it's about souls needing to be saved, baptized, and brought to you. These are all the blessings we ask your son, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, not going to be before you long. going to be very short and sweet. But yet, uh, we're going to come out of the book of John. The third chapter. Uh, the first through the fifth verse. And then we're going to skip down to the tenth through the eleventh verses. That is John 3. 
1 through 5, and then we're going to skip down to verse 10 through 11. The gospel according to John. 1, 3, 1 through 5, and then the 10th through the 11th verses. Uh, these are very familiar passages of scripture. Amen. And they read, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from God. For no man can do these things that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again? When he is old, hmm. can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now let's skip down to the 10th and 11th verse. 10th verse says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. For a little while, we're just going to talk to you from the subject, You must be born again. You must be born again. This Gospel of John was written by the beloved disciple, who is also known as the Apostle John. This, along with his other writings, the three epistles, as well as the book of Revelations, were all written from the city of Ephesus, all written after AD 70, which was the time that the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed. Destroyed by the Romans by an order by the Roman Emperor. John does not deal with the birth of Jesus Christ in his gospel if you go back and read. Only Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I mean Luke, sorry, Matthew, Mark, and Luke deal with the birth of Jesus Christ. For those three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are considered synoptic Gospels because each one deals with the lineage of Jesus Christ. A couple go all the way to the Old Testament, to Ruth, one goes back to David. They all run through his lineage, through his birth, and through his whole life, all the way up to his death and resurrection. But John is a little different. John takes it back to the beginning. John deals with Jesus and his deity. In other words, he deals with the Christ. Christ being the Son of God, part of the Godhead. Because we believe and know that Christ is God. John 1 and 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John here proves that Christ was in the beginning at creation. If you read in Genesis 1 and 26, you will see here where it says, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So John proves that Christ is God and was at the beginning. John's purpose of writing this gospel or and these epistles from Ephesus was to encourage what's called the diaspora Jews or dispersed Jews. For after the temple of the Lord was destroyed, many of the Jews, the Jewish Christians and Jews were scattered throughout the Roman Empire as well as Gentile believers who were Christians also being persecuted. All were dispersed throughout the Roman Empire. So John wrote this, these letters and these epistles and these books to encourage, especially this gospel, to encourage the Christian Jews and the Christian Gentiles 
of Jesus Christ and encourage them not to forget who he is. For after the destruction of the temple, many Jewish followers of Christ had found themselves afraid and alone. For at this time, the persecution of the church was in full force. And John wanted the people to really know and not forget who Jesus really is. That is the same desire we should have today. To want to share Christ with anybody. We should not hesitate to share him with the world. We should not be afraid to share Christ. Whether it's the person, the drug addict on the corner, or whether it's your family, whether it's your co-worker. Sharing Jesus Christ should be a part of our life and it should be who we are. John reminds them of not only the miracles of Jesus, talking about the Jews and the Christians, but he reminds them of his steadfast, steadfastness in his love and his compassion for his people. Despite the opposition of the Pharisees and religious leaders, at times that could be very intense, Christ never negated the people. He never stopped loving the people, healing the sick, raising the dead and giving them what they need. John shows that Christ never let the Pharisees or the religious leaders or the opposition deter him from his mission to redeem man back to God. So let's look at our key men or key people in this particular chapter or in this particular part of this chapter. Jesus and Nicodemus. Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. Meaning we're asked, why would this man approach Jesus at night? Well, the answer is, was that Nicodemus was a religious leader. He was a Pharisee. It would not be wise for him to be seen with a man who claims to be the son of God. It would have hurt his social standing and he possibly could have been removed or punished as a leader. But we must not ever, as God's people, not be ashamed of who we are or whose we are. It's not enough to teach it or to preach it, but we're all, we also are to love it as well and live it as well. The word of God should be every, in every aspect of our lives, from the time we get up to the time we lay down for the final time. Our life should be as a living epistle. Paul says in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. We as God's people should not be ashamed to let our light so shine that the world may see who we are and who we belong to. Jesus says in Matthew 10, 33, But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. We should not be ashamed to let the world know that we love Jesus Christ, that we are a part of Jesus Christ, and we are his people, as Psalm says, and the sheep of his pasture. He is our good shepherd, and we should be proud to, to proclaim to the world that he is my Lord and Savior. For him I live, and for him I die. Jesus himself was bold, but not brash when representing his father. He stayed faithful to his father's will, even unto the death of the cross. That should be an example for us. We as God's people have to be bold, not brass, not prideful, but bold and unafraid to proclaim the gospel and to proclaim and fulfill the mission that Christ has given us, even if it takes us unto death. Jesus had no social standing or money, for the Pharisees only saw him as a poor carpenter's son. Jesus said himself in Matthew 8 and 20, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nets, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. 
If you look at these two particular people, Nicodemus being a Pharisee, being rich, having status, Jesus being a poor carpenter's son, not having money, you know, not having the status as Nicodemus was, their contrasts were very stark. In, 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 the, in the human eye, Nicodemus would seem to have more clout. Nicodemus would seem to have more say-so. But the one thing Jesus had that, 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 that Nicodemus needed was eternal life. Nicodemus needed that living water. Jesus, Nicodemus needed that living bread. Christ basically gave Nicodemus something that he could not buy, something that he did not have already. In the 10th verse, Jesus questions Nicodemus. Considering how educated Nicodemus was, yet he lacked the understanding of what Christ was telling him. We as preachers and pastors must make sure that as we gain knowledge of the gospel, we also gain some understanding. Having all the knowledge in the world profits you nothing if you can't understand and know how to use the gospel, how to preach the gospel, how to present the gospel for others to understand for themselves. The word of God is simple and you don't need to be a rocket scientist to know it or to understand it. Men and women gain all kinds of theological degrees and doctorates and masters and use such big words, but forget that the gospel is very simple. And you don't need to, 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 to have all these things to explain it or to understand it for yourself. We must be like John the Baptist as he prepared the way for Jesus Christ, preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We must preach and be bold, not based on a degree, but based on the gospel, letting the word of God be our foundation. For you can have all the knowledge in the world, all the knowledge of the word of God and still be ineffective. So in other words, when we stand up and preach the word of God, we must allow the Holy Spirit to take over. We must allow ourselves to be, be covered in the gospel, allow it to be a part of us so that when we stand and preach the gospel, we not only understand. in the first few verses of this chapter recognize that Jesus came from God and that God alone could only be the one that allows him to have the power to perform the miracles that he did but when you read in those verses it seems to be a underlining question that Nicodemus really wanted to answer that question is, is are you who you say you are Hmm. It seemed that this Pharisee wanted to learn and see for himself who Jesus truly and really was. Jesus, knowing this, knowing that Nicodemus hadn't really got to the actual meat of why he was there, guides him to a path of eternal life. He says in the third verse of this chapter, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus, instead of elaborating on himself and feeding into Nicodemus's curiosity, instead he gave Nicodemus words of life, a message to save his soul. Jesus had love and compassion for this man, Nicodemus. Now, I know many of you out there will wonder, why would Jesus have love and compassion for this Pharisee? One of the very men that was always after Jesus. Why would Jesus have love for this man? Well, my brothers and sisters, the answer is, in order for you to be able to reach others, you have to love them and have compassion for them in the beginning. You have to have love and compassion to understand that they need Jesus. They need what you have in order for them to be reached. 
Hmm. Because in order to preach, to teach, and to baptize, we must first love those who we need to reach. Jesus didn't look down on Nicodemus, but instead he gave him a message of life, a message that he needed for himself. Nicodemus needed to understand that in order to get to heaven, he had to be born again. He had to be saved. He had to accept the very man he was sitting in front of. That should be our message today. You must be born again. In this time and in, in, in our time and in our crazy technological world, many people will still believe that moral goodness and right living can get you into heaven. Many believe there are other roads that lead to heaven. Many believe that enjoying the, the, the earthly pleasures of this world, the sinful pleasures of this world, can still get them to heaven. Many pe people still believe that they can do their dirt now, and then when they die, they can still go to heaven. But my brothers and sisters, last time I checked, Jesus Christ said in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In other words, there is no other way to get yourself into heaven except that you first accept Christ and be baptized. That you be baptized with water and with spirit. Time out for everybody believing all of this craziness of purgatory and all of these other things. Christ laid it straight. He said, I am the only way and what's wrong with the world is nobody wants to accept that Christ is the way but I urge you my brothers and sisters to spread this gospel to spread this word to let the world know that to be saved Christ is the only way we must preach this message to everyone that has an ear to hear we must tell this world that Jesus is the way to heaven we, we must not be ashamed of our faith, but instead we should make sure that we have faith in Jesus to know that he will be with us always. For he said in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, go ye there far into the world, teaching them to observe all things, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. We must stand on the gospel and preach and let the world know that you must be born again. Time out for all these other things that we preach. The word is simple. The word, as Paul said, is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, which is the word of faith which we preach that if thou should confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It is imperative that we stand like the Apostle Paul when he stood before Festus and Agrippa, giving them the gospel, giving them the truth, letting them know that Jesus is the true Messiah, that Jesus is the Savior, and he is coming back. And in order to go back with him, we must accept him. And once we accept him, the Bible says you are sealed until the day of redemption. Hallelujah. You, 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 you have to stand up like Paul and Silas. Even in the prison, giving praise to God, singing and praying. The Bible says the earth shook and the prison doors swung open. If you have faith in God and if you are doing a mission, the Lord will deliver you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will give you strength. We must continue to give the word. We must continue to give the world and let the world know that they must be baptized. We must be strong in our convictions. We must be strong in our faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For Hebrews says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
the evidence of things not seen. We need that faith in order to preach the gospel, in order to teach, and in order to baptize. We need that faith in order to go out and expound on the gospel and tell them that they must be baptized from the president to the lowest ranking person in this country, to the to, to, to the highest of kingdoms, to the lowest of the slums. The gospel must be preached. They must be. They have to be baptized. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. As I said before, we must be born again. We must be baptized. That is the gospel. That is the word that we must preach. And that is what we must send out and to reach others. So that others may be helped, whether in this type of platform or whether face to face, Lord's willing, when we can go back face to face like we were before, the word needs to go out. I don't care who you are or what you are. You don't have to preach. You don't have to be a deacon, just a layman, a person that is fired up with the Holy Spirit can deliver somebody, can talk to somebody, can witness somebody, can give somebody the gospel because this is serious. Because we have to make a choice. And that choice is heaven or hell. The Bible says, woe unto them. Huh. Woe unto them who have to who rise in the second resurrection. But my brothers and sisters, I, I don't want to be a part of that second. I want to be a part of that first. I want to be a part of that rapture. I want to be a part of that number that no man can number. I want to be at the feet of of Jesus and we should want others to be at the feet of Jesus we should want other souls to be saved other souls to be helped so that's why we must open our hearts and our minds to others be like Christ like he was to Nicodemus how he, instead of elaborating on himself as I said before he opened up his heart to Nicodemus because he loved him because he had compassion on Nicodemus and he wanted Nicodemus to be helped and he wanted Nicodemus to have a word of life. That's why Christ said, you must be born again in order to see the kingdom or inherit the kingdom of God. And later on in this chapter, the 16th verse says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish or shall not perish, but have everlasting life god bless you and god keep you hope to see you next week at the same time same place on facebook live sunday afternoon fellowship and we pray that as we continue to do this that this grows tell your neighbors tell your friends friend my page reverend mark reed on facebook friend me i would love to have more to be a part of this uh, the Lord has lead, led me to do this, this vision that God has given me. And I pray that this can be a building block that, that, that saves souls and that we can meet together in the future in a building where the word of God can be preached, can be taught, and, we, and folks can be baptized and helped. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. And uh, like I said, again, I'd like to see you all again next week, same time, same place. Amen.